we are officially in a position where we can show you guys the difference between a hot shot it's a cdl setup not a non-cdl i repeat this is not a non-cdl setup this is a cdl setup with a semi truck and we can do some comparison <laughs> Pops, the great dispatcher. Gee, man, look what this is. Nice little solid. Mm-hmm. Semi, we got the hot shot. How much you got on the hot shot right now? 41. That's 41, all right. This is 38, all right. So, hot shot currently has more than the semi, but how many drops do you gotta make? You gotta make three drops. I gotta make two drops, okay? Two hours apart from each other. Drove about 900 miles to get here. He did about the same thing we picked up in the Carolinas. So we're dropping off about, about 900 miles each. All right, how much money you spent on fuel? About $400, so it's $800 you spent. He's on his second tank, he's about to drop off. So he's not gonna spend no more money. He's 20 minutes from his drop off, I'm an hour away from my drop off. I spent roughly around $1,400 already in fuel. And I've only been driven 900 miles. I got another 80 to go tomorrow, so. But well, after that 1,400, you still got maybe six or 700 in the tank. Yeah, yeah, I still got plenty of tank because I just filled up um, maybe like, what, two hours ago? So maybe two hours ago, so I still got some of the tanks. So I really came up here on one tank. I could have pushed it and got up here on one tank. Yeah, I probably could have got up here on one tank. Same thing as you. We just wanted to top off. 800 for fuel with the hot shot. 800 for, we do have a fuel tank. And then um, 1,400 so far with fuel with the, with, the, uh, with the semi. How much weight you got on your truck? Maybe 8,000. 8,000 pounds is not bad for a CDL. CDL, technically, if you were registered for a non-CDL, this, this can go on a non-CDL too, right? Yeah, cool. All right, cool. So, that, so this is basically, when I say non-CDLs, for people who don't know, light it's just a light load. It's not a, it's not a specific load that caters to the non-CDL. It's just a light load. So this, less than 10,000 pounds, you should do what a non-CDL can carry. But he's CDL set up, so he can carry, you know, of course, more than that, no problem, no issues. Um, this is 30,000 pounds, if I'm correct. I think both of these combined were like 14.5, something like that. Like this one's 14, that one's 14. And then that's probably like, I think he says like maybe like 300 pounds, something like that. This is the middle of the week. It's a short week. We started late. We started late. I started late. I think we started Tuesday. We really could have been here earlier. Today is Thursday. Um, I'm getting reloaded with another 2,000 going up to Minnesota. You you got a load yet or are you still trying to find one? I got a load, but I ain't going to be able to drop it until next week. How's DOT treating you out there? Um, got one good inspection All right. yesterday. Got one good inspection? And then I got another one, which is bad. Which is bad. Two inspections okay. in one day. What you guys saw in the last video, or if you guys haven't seen the last video, it's your first time watching me, you can go to our recent video that I just posted, uh, I think a couple days ago or a day ago. You know, he got inspected by DOT. His first inspection, his first violation that he's ever gotten. Well, that's your first no, no, violation. No, no, yeah. That's Not your first one. Like yeah, first one in like a long, long time. You know, I know I have a bad rap, but you know, I want to say that because in the hot shot, he got pulled twice in one day. In the semi, I haven't got touched. With the semi, right, versus the hot shot, what's the difference in startup costs? So like currently, right now in the current market, now back when you first started, I know you spent 12,000 to get your hot shot and your, your semi truck, but right now in the current market, how do you feel? If you were to finance both of these? Yeah. The startup money, the, start, the finance money is the same. You're gonna spend, 60,000 on the truck, in my case, 12,000 on the trailer, 38,000 on the truck, and maybe 48 on the, on the trailer. Mm. Okay. The money is the same as far as if you're financing your equipment. When it comes to comfortability, this is like one of my biggest things for me. 
But you know, this is his bed, you know? This is what he has to work with. That's his bed. Literally, this is his bed. This is what he has to work with. I think anybody can do it, especially when you're, you know, my daddy's a little, <laughs> a little bit of a smaller guy. Don't let him hear me say that, but a little bit of a smaller guy, so he can definitely fit in there. But me, I couldn't do it no more. I'm 6'3", 290. I can't, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. This is your living quarters, and this is how you would work. And then, you know, of course, in the front, you know, you make it do however you want to make it do. Same thing with any other truck, though. You do have to run electronic logs, like a semi truck. Uh, it's an old truck, so you know things are still being repaired. But I do have two bunks in here. That's a bunk up top, and that's a bunk down there. Um, you know, I got a lot of space in here. A lot of you know, place to sleep, a lot of place to move around, change your clothes, wipe your ass, anything like that. You know what I mean? I got my cooler right up here in the front. Um, got my ELD right up here at the top. Got my GPS right here. GPS right here. It's right here. It's, right here. it's just off right now. So I got a lot of space in here to maneuver and still feel, you know, like I'm not trapped somewhere. So that's another big key thing to me is the comfortability. You know what I mean? Uh, the semi truck definitely does win over comfortability versus the hot shot. But like I said, it's to each his own. So then you also have to tell yourself about the year of the truck that you're going to get if you're going to go hot shot or the year of the truck if you're going to go semi. Now a brand new Peterbilt right now is like $210,000. A brand new hot shot, brand new Ram 3500, the typical ones that go on the road are the Ram 3500, the 5500, you got your F350s, which is the Ford, and then you got your Chevy, your Duramaxes, the 3500s and stuff like that. So those are usually going for about 70K, maybe 80K for something brand spanking new, depending on how many bells and whistles you decide to put on your trucks. This truck is with the business. This is under 1A1 Logistics. That's what this truck is about. $68,000 compared to $210,000 for a brand new truck. So most people, what they do when they go semi, they get an older truck. Well, right now, the market's kind of going a little bit down for the trucks. The skyrocket, the, the prices skyrocketed not too long ago. Prices were like, what were they? Like for this truck right here, we can sell this truck easily for $80,000. We bought it for $35,000 though. So people usually go old, but the problem with old is, you know, you might have a little bit more problems, might have to have like, you know, mecha a mechanic on standby with it. Not saying if you go new that, you, that your truck is not liable to break down, because it's gonna break down. It's, it's a truck that's, you're working it. It's working components that's, you know, over time it's gonna wear and tear, something's gonna break, something's gonna happen. But with these newer trucks, you cannot delete these trucks. So if you got, um, I think it's like um, a 2015, whatever, when they come with the DF on them, you cannot delete the trucks. Um, it's illegal. If you get caught doing it, it's a big fine. Same thing with these guys. You cannot delete these trucks. It's illegal. If you get caught doing it, it's a big fine. Another thing is, when it comes to these trucks, it's gonna break. Probably gonna get a good solid 300,000 miles on it, depending on how good of a mechanic you are. If you're a really good mechanic, you'll get a whole lot more. But if you're not mechanically inclined, then you're, you know, you know, you're down for doomsday. The first truck we had was, um, I think it was a, what was it called? It was a Ram 30, not the first truck, but the first truck I drove was Ram 3500, it was a 2016. It had the wrong transmission. This has the ASIN transmission. We had the 68 FE R, whatever that transmission was. We had that transmission, and we only got 300,000 miles before that transmission started giving us issues. These trucks are going to fail. With the DEF system, it has a system that basically clogs up the EGR and all the extra stuff, and it will mess up your motor over time. And you know, that's something that you're gonna have to worry about when you get this truck. But if you go old, I suggest not going old because old, you know, you're going to have a lot of issues with those trucks too. So new is the way to go. You're just going to have to have a little bit of money, especially when warranty warranty ends after 100,000 miles or you can buy yourself some more warranty. You'll be straight. But with these trucks, these trucks do break down a lot, man. I mean, especially with the DEF shit, it, it just, you got to be, it's like the look of the barrel. Some people get really lucky. Some people don't. You know, I know people who broke down at 20,000 miles, including myself. I know some people who are still pushing at 300,000 miles and doing pretty good. So it just depends on the luck of the barrel, the luck of the draw, what you get. This semi truck, we had a couple of issues such as like the differential. We had to get that differential fixed. You guys, if you guys are current subscribers of the channel, you guys know what I'm talking about. We had to get the differential fixed. That's fixed, it's solid. No more leaks, no more issues. And then we had a small oil leak. That's fixed, that's complete. No more issues with that. So, so far the truck is complete when it comes to performance on the outside. But the interior, the electronical stuff that we gotta worry about, that's the things that we gotta worry about now. Just getting it cleaned up, getting a paint job, small stuff like that. You can expect to make, I'm gonna say anywhere between six to 8,000 in a hot shot consistently every single week if you know what you're doing and your numbers are established. When I say established, you know, more than six, six months, more than a year old of your MC number, your DLT number. 
you can make anywhere between eight to 10 average every single week in this. Now, sometimes we have had weeks where we made more. We made $12,000 in this truck. No, my dad's made 15,000. He says he's made what? $18,000 in this truck before. So he's made 18. The most I've made in a, in a, in a, in a hot shot, the most I made in a hot shot was 13,000. So the numbers are there, but it's not gonna happen all the time. So your average with the, with the hot shot is anywhere between six to eight. The average with the semi is anywhere between eight to 10. So another big key component to deciding which truck you're gonna get, hot shot or semi, is the maintenance. And when it comes to maintenance with this truck, you know, things, I ain't gonna lie, I honestly feel like ten, things, ten, things tend to go a little bit wrong, a little bit more because they have a major front wheel wear and tear issue. A lot of the Rams guy have it. We, I had a big one before. A um, um, couple other YouTubers, they had some um, tear on their, you know, their, on the side of their tread with the front tires. Um, that's something that happens a lot. Um, these trailers, they're good trailers. Big Techs, Diamond C, PJ, whoever you go with. But over time, trailers can't handle this consistent work all the time, not all the time. If you're out there on the road, it doesn't matter what you're at, man. If they know you're over the road, you know they know you're not home, they can screw you with any truck. They can screw you in this, they can screw you in that. So to fix the axle on that truck, when we did fix it, uh, like I said, we was over the road. I think it was like $3,800, right, Dad? For the axle for this trailer? So it was like $3,800 to fix the axle on this trailer. When we were home to fix this differential, my dad got it fixed on the road by somebody. How much he charged you when you go to the road for this? He charged him $4,800 to fix the differential on the truck. Um, when we got it, they, he didn't do a great job and we took it to somebody else back at home and they charged us what? Well, for everything said and done, that bill was high too, it was 7,000 because they did some other stuff as well. And I did a video on that so you guys can check that out as well. But it was $7,000 to fix that. But everything is bigger. Best thing about driving a semi though, like right now we're at a truck stop, if something goes bad and we need to be fixed, if we lose a tire or something, we can go up to the Loves or the Pilot or um, the Flying J and let them work on the truck. They have no problem working on the truck. But with the Hot Shots, they're not gonna touch the Hot Shots. I don't know what it is. They say their equipment is too big for the Hot Shots, I guess, but they will not touch the Hot Shots. They, they will not touch the Hot Shots. They only touch semi trucks. So that's another thing that you gotta think about when you're over the road. The truck stops will not help you or assist you when it comes to maintenance. So you have to have a, me a mechanic back at home who knows what he's doing. If you guys want to tap into a mechanic and you are in Atlanta, Georgia area, you got Status Transportation or Status Truck and um, Trailer Repair. They also work on the Dodge Rams. They, they, they specialize in the Dodge Rams so they can work on your truck if you have a Dodge Ram. I don't know about any other pickups, but I know for sure the Dodge Ram, they definitely work on it. If you have a semi truck or trailer, they will also work on that as well. And Highway 85 over there in Georgia. Between these two different vehicles or these two different pieces of equipment, DOT. You know, DOT is a big factor in it. Um, they're out here to protect us. They're out here to make sure that we're out here being safe, actually, actually doing our jobs with our pre-trip and everything every single day. Um, with the hot shot, like I said in the last video, my dad got inspected twice in one day. With the semi, I haven't been inspected yet. Knock on wood. You know, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mind them inspecting me, but I don't need them picking on me or trying to get a whole bunch of attention. You know what I mean? I don't like saying the word picking on me, but um, you know, I don't, I, don't need, I, don't, I don't need them trying to just point me out all the time, point me out all the time. But um, you're definitely gonna get a lot more attention being in the hot shot. And it's just the name of the game. It's always been like that. They say, quote unquote, it's easier to inspect you. It only takes 15 minutes to 30 minutes to inspect you. They go about their day. They can do hot shots all day, every single day. That's what they do. Uh, with a semi truck, you're not gonna get that much trouble. You know, you can walk in there with a broken headlight. They're not gonna mess with you. Um, that's just how it is. Especially if you drive with a Peterbilt, they're not gonna mess with you. But I think that concludes the video today. Um, I just want to share some light on the difference between the hot shot and the semi. Now I know the question is, hey Benny, what would you pick right now if you were starting from the beginning and you had like you had all the funds and now that you know what you know from both sides, which one would you pick? And honestly, man, I would go with the hot shot. I would pick the hot shot. And the reason why I would pick the hot shot is the hot shot taught me everything I need to know to run this. The hot shot made me feel safe. The hot shot made me feel comfortable because it's like driving a truck or driving a car back at home. You have that trailer behind you. It's, even, it's easier to maneuver. It's easier to learn. It's beginning steps. So I really appreciate the hot shot for everything it showed me in the trucking game and it's gotten to me where I'm at right now. It helped me get my CDL. It helped me get to the next level. It helped me see some different type of money. You know, it's really gotten me to the point I am right now in my life. So I appreciate everything to the hot shot. And if I was to start over right now with everything I know, I would still start off with the hot shot because it's a learning curve. All this is a learning curve. 
it's a learning curve this is that you can say that you can make money faster or not faster but uh i say easier in this because you could throw a pebble and you could pick up a flatbed or a step deck load anywhere with hot shot you got to kind of pick the pick and choose the areas you go to but other than that i mean i would start off with a hot shot that's my opinion